Welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast of three brothers trying to figure it all out with your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. On this week's show, definitely iguana. What's going on? Oh, man. It's the longest weekend, River. How you doing? (laughs) (laughs) We, we, we barely missed, we missed out. Get ready for this. I missed out on three and a half inches of sleet and snow today by like two miles. (laughs) (laughs) Is it about like feet? Probably, I think. (laughs) Almost feet. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it was basically feet. Like mere, mere feet further east. And uh, I would, I would have, um, have had inches of snow this morning. <laughs> yeah, we had snow a little bit. It wasn't a whole bunch, but we definitely had snow. We had, uh, by my reckoning, yesterday in a 24 hour period, we had uh, three out of four seasons. So <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> Plus tornado warning. Eh? Yeah. Do you have that? We yeah. had that. We had that. Was that fun. Uh, Tuesday. We had that on Tuesday. We had I was actually doing a drop in on a dog and it was like 645 and all of a sudden I hear the the sirens were up and I'm like, "Well, I got to get back home." And then they stopped. And that's always like, "Why why did you stop?" And then they started up again. Yeah, so it's a little unnerving like, <laughs> "Uh." Yeah, and wait. then they started up again <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, I guess they're really serious. <laughs> I better go home." <laughs> Yeah, I just did that yesterday. They worded up a little bit and uh for a while had the news on. Me and Chip were hanging out. Uh that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> there was it was funny though because we're teaching uh, it's weather science time right now. And so this morning I was so oh, do you guys uh how'd you like that news? And we've been talking about like all those terms that you hear and we we've learned about like what fronts are and what is the pressure differences. And we just did the severe weather presentations recently. And so they were like, yo, I <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's great. I had two girls and they were at each, they were like at each other's house or something. They were like over at one of those houses. <clears throat> and, uh, one of them looked out the window on one side of their house and was like, man, you should look at the clouds. They're really dark out here. And another one looked out the window on the other side of the house and like, what are you talking about? It's really bright and sunny over here. And they're like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so they went outside and they were looking at the clouds and they could see that they were moving like towards each other. <laughs> oh man. And they were like, Hey, that's what causes a tornado <laughs> when you have <laughs> but that wind shear, right? They're like, when you have yeah. those clouds moving towards each other, that's yeah. that front. And that's how you can get a tornado. And their dad was like, one of their dads was like, no, nah, there's not going to be a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> she said like, right after he said that the siren came on and she was like, see, told you. <laughs> I know. It was, I know. <laughs> Bam. Got him. So <laughs> good job. <laughs> There was some like small stuff though, because I guess some houses got kind of like wrecked a little bit. Some Mm. like one of my kids uh, no longer has a trampoline. What? Uh, it's gone. (laughs) It's missing. Oh my (laughs) gosh! Blew blew away. (laughs) Yeah. Um. So there was some some stuff like real small, localized probably, and like a real high wind gust yesterday, but. So that was fun. I just added to the insane week that it's been. Hooray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it really has. I, I, this week has gone by insanely slow. And part of that is, um, it's spring break for us up here. And so, oh, what's that? I, I know. Oh, no. I have, uh, <laughs> we have been everyone, every, literally everyone. Remember how last time we recorded and I was like, oh my gosh, we're insanely busy with dogs. Now take that and, yeah. two, and two exit. Um, and oh, wow, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have in one, in a 72 hour period, I said, we said, we told as many people no as are now currently booked for us, booked with us for the week. Oh, my God. Good all <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. So that's insane. <laughs> that is insane. 
everyone was just like, we gotta go. And the number of people that were like, I'm leaving tomorrow. And it's like, like well, uh, no, <laughs> not how any of this well, works. Then, then we're not watching your dog. So yeah, sorry. I know it's, and you know, so in it's, you know, some people had situations where, you know, they had a, family member pass away out of town and they're trying yeah, to like leave. emergency stuff emergency, right yeah. but it, but i'm still like we can't accommodate right because we're full with it's physically else. impossible it's physically it's not like we can squeeze one in right like that's not yeah. how this works so <laughs> so we've been doing our best to try and convert people who wanted to board with us into us doing drop-ins in their house drop-in um, visits yeah drop in. and and it's it's insane because um, as soon as we say that, people go, "Well, we'll just, you know, we'll we'll just have our neighbor do it." And I'm like, Wh- "What? <laughs> okay, whatever, whatever." Fine. That's interesting, but you know, yeah, right. <laughs> fine. So I didn't want to be that busy anyway. So I, I currently have. True. I currently we just got a new one dropped off. She's a, uh, a mini Aussie, um, and we have a Brittany. Ooh. We have a Brittany with us. We have a Labradoodle. Oh. I have a so calm dogs. Wait, no. <laughs> oh, I have a three legged. I have a three legged um, lab named Trip. Yes, a three legged lab named Trip. Wow, <laughs> wow, that's harsh, man. Come on, what are you so doing? Cute. He's so cute. <laughs> that's mean. I know. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> and then who else we got here? Hold on. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know what he is. He's a terrier something mix, and a five month, four month old lab puppy. So we're doing really good. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All the calm dogs at Con's house currently. I know. Thankfully, I was calm. <laughs> Yeah, with no not sep- barking at all, with no separation <laughs> with no anxiety. Separate. It's very nice, right? Oh my gosh, right? Sep- yeah. <gasps> so <laughs> yeah, I was t- I was telling Megan. I said, would I rather have fewer? large dogs or more small dogs then i've come to the conclusion i would have fewer large dogs for sure because it's a lot but, yeah <laughs> that's true i have to hold on i've got to switch my headphone jack hold on ah. anyway uh i'm back okay all right good so yeah my week has been long too. We had it, yeah. it was parent teacher conferences this week. Ooh. So I had to stay at school till like six thirty. Right. And then like for Monday and Tuesday. And then it's been great. We're in the middle of hiring a new superintendent, so it's like interview time. Oh, and no. so Susan has to be there for that. For all, so everything. she's been gone forever. Yeah, you know, doing all the stuff. She's been gone for forever and Tomorrow was supposed to be a day off, but because of snow apocalypse, they're like, nah, just go to school. But they usually always have Friday of the parent teacher conferences day week off because it's just so brutal yeah. and long. You have to be at school that long. And this this time they're like, eh, no, it's fine. Do it. No. <laughs> what? But I don't I don't want to. That's a tomorrow's are like tomorrow's are like celebration for positive uh reinforcement. So we do that PBIS stuff, that positive behavior support thing. Okay. And um, yeah. I I never I never remember what I stands for. Sorry. I'm a bad PBIS is, school. Is it employee. inspirational? Um I don't know maybe. Igu- is it iguana um, iguana? Definitely iguana. Okay. Um <laughs> uh, tomorrow's our like celebration for like we track their positive behaviors and if they get a certain percentage is we have a celebration day. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's tomorrow. What's the celebration? So that's going to be a uh, well. Being is that it's still the time of COVID, a bit and, pandemic-y. Uh, a bit pandemic-y. It looks like it's going to be extra recess. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? There you go. Can't, can't be too picky in a pandemic. I mean, yeah, they'll get time. Right. Uh, this is, um, of course, hoping that the playground, we're going to the playground that we nobody uses right now because it's like really far away and it takes a long time to get back to the building. So we're going to go there. Oh. And it usually drains off and isn't too muddy. 
Uh, so we're hoping that's still true tomorrow. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> because oh, no. it rained and snowed. So we're like, <laughs> we don't have a backup plan because all the gyms are <laughs> booked already. Yeah, and they like didn't give us any notice about what time it was. So we have like no activities. Oh, so. No. Worst comes to worst, uh, we'll come up with a backup plan. We'll do like a rotation, right? Like one room can be like iPad room. They can come to my room and play silent ball. Everyone loves the ball game yeah. that I've invented in my classroom for of recess. Course. So we could have a, a rotation of that and we could just come up with one other thing to do and we can have a little rotation between classes. Boom. Every couple, you know, 30 minutes or something and switch them up. So that could be fun. I'm going to suggest that tomorrow if it's really gross outside. That's my plan. <laughs> yeah. <It's... laughs> so tomorrow morning in science to calm down, we're going to watch part two of wild weather with Richard Hammond. Uh, <laughs> the episode about water. Cause that's water. the part we started today. Yeah. It's really good. I love that. <laughs> it's great. Uh, and so we're going to watch that tomorrow to kind of chillax. <clears throat> but it's just been crazy. It's like basketball season, right, too. So they've conned me into going to some of their basketball games. And I went to the... Um, I went to one on Tuesday because I was already at school. And mm-hmm. I couldn't leave until... Susan had to be there till like 8 o'clock. So after parent-teacher conferences, I just went to the basketball game. <laughs> and I went to the other one like last week. <clears throat> oh. They make me tired. <laughs> All that yelling. I mean, actually, yes. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> my kids, I know. My kids are like, my kids are like, well, if you come, you have to cheer. And I was like, they're like, you have to cheer loud. I was like, don't challenge me. Why? Like that. <laughs> you don't know. That's you don't know what you're getting into. That, that's included in the package. Oh, you don't have to pay extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's what's going to happen. Don't challenge me and so like i sat over in the student section because the parents really don't appreciate my enthusiasm uh my cheering <laughs> ability right my wow. my rogersville bread uh insane cheering <laughs> like i don't <laughs> i don't uh i was in the pet band for a reason guys right. you're not <laughs> <laughs> yes there was the music playing but also <laughs> the uh, yeah but also the extremely loud cheering and so the the kids were really into it. I I got them cheering. That was fun. We we harnessed the boys' power for good. Their loudness and ridiculousness. Mm-hmm. Tried to harness some of that for good, and we cheered for the girls. There you go. Uh, good job. <laughs> we, yeah. we call that redirecting. <laughs> redirecting. Yes. <laughs> so it was really good. The first game I went to. Oh my god! The girls gave me a heart attack. It was awful. Like no, it was. They actually did really really good. But they oh. like came from behind and won in overtime by like a buzzer beater rebound shot. I was like, I'm dying. I literally, I can't handle this. (laughs) Sixth grade basketball is not supposed to be like this. What are you doing to me over here? (laughs) (laughs) And then, so I didn't get to watch all of their game this last week, but it was really, the first part was good. Uh, They won again. And then the boys, oh my God. Holy cow. What the heck? They did really great too. So great. It was good. It was good times shouting and cheering. And, <laughs> you know, it's good. So some of the parents were like, <laughs> the other teachers were like, can you calm down over there? I was like, never, never, ever would I do that. I don't think you understand how this works. Uh, yeah, you don't understand how this works. That's not <laughs> what's going to happen here. And they were giving tours to like the new superintendent. So like the oh, current God. superintendent and the principal, my, my principal were like walking through the hallways and I'm in there like, yeah, <laughs> like screaming. <laughs> it's great. My building principal loves it, right? She thinks it's fantastic. Oh, well, yeah. So, so. <laughs> but I don't know how. Called it. How our our current superintendent feels about that? Well, you certainly made know. a first impression. That's for sure. Hey, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> Be known for something. I'm cheering for our kids, man. I, look, I kind of think of it too as like they don't know how to cheer for anybody. So we were cheering. I was telling them like, hey, 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 we gotta Life do lessons. this. Don't do that. Right? Yeah. I'm oh. Trying to tell them like, trying to tell them the difference between like we're not cheering against the other team you go calm down we're cheering for our team that's important difference right we're trying to be not negative nancy's in sixth grade trying to be positive here so we want to (laughs) 
<laughs> we want to make it a good experience for everybody. So we're we're not doing that stuff. We're cheering loud here. We're doing that. So it was kind of it's fun. It was good times. <laughs> so that was it. And boy, am I glad tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah, and I got shot on Monday. Yeah, uh, uh, I Dang. think we need to be a little bit more specific. <laughs> That's true. No uh, I mean, vaccine. I mean... <laughs> vaccine round one. <laughs> what, That's the other thing that made Monday so long because I had to go. I went early in the morning to get round one of vaccine at the drive-through uh, clinic thing they had down. And so I had to get up and drive to that, and then. Do you know which one you got? That. Uh, the Pfizer one. Okay. So, yeah, I got shooted in the arm. It was really like surprisingly the most efficient thing I've ever seen in my life. See, it's <laughs> it just, good. They just had it in, like a baseball field down, down there, and they just like, huh. drive through. They had them on. They had nurses out there on both sides. And you're like, here, here's this form. Stab. Fill this form out. And <laughs> as you were driving, because you have to wait for like 15 minutes to make sure nothing happens. You know? Right. They have some immediate side effects like, they watch for. <clears throat> yeah. And so there's like, they're monitoring you. So you just, they just made a big U in this gravel parking lot. <laughs> and you just drive around the U. And when you get to the end, they're like, you good? You all right? All right. Here's paper. Bye. <laughs> like, it was, it was it. It was <laughs> They wrote all the. They wrote what time you got there on the windshield. So they just were walking around, looking at you, checking you out, being like, "Oh wow, okay, okay bye." Meow. So yeah, it was kind of. I was like, "Wow, this is weirdly efficient for <laughs> Barry County." Like, what's happening right here? I kind of shocked by that. So <clears throat> it was good, but it did make the day very long. <laughs> like very long. So, so did you because of that? And then parent teacher conference that night. So it was like, <laughs> oh, so did you have any side effects or how are you feeling? No, I feel fine. Good. It does in fact hurt like your arm. Like it's really sore for a while. Oh, really? But other than oh. that, it's fine. Yeah, it's kind of like a think of like a really bad like tetanus shot. Yep. Which is like sore for a while. Like, uh, uh-huh. uh that's all I had. And then, like, later in the day, I had the headache, but I, it's hard to know if that was related or the fact that I'm a sixth grade teacher, right? It's, you know, so I'm, <laughs> I'm imagining it was just the fact that I'm a sixth grade teacher because I, I feel fine. So <laughs> <laughs> fast rebound. Yeah, it's like I have headaches all the time. So, like, not all the time, but like, not uncommon. Like, sure. Because it's, you know, you're around sixth graders all day. So sometimes you're just like, <laughs> Not that six, eight, six, 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 six graders are inherently headache inducing, but they may contribute. <laughs> but they kind of are sometimes. Some days. Some days. They are. So they don't help. <laughs> well, that was it, though. Well, that, good. good. Awesome. After that first day, I was like, oh, hey, now my arm doesn't hurt anymore. All right, cool. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we'll see after the next one. That's supposed to be what three weeks, I guess. So see that that one's the one that's supposed to be like maybe you get like weird feeling, but I don't know. I've talked to a lot of people that are just like it is fine. So we'll see. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ugh, that's been basically it. A long, arduous been, week. Been busy. Of, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> this is like way too busy it's like yeah can i be a little less busy please yeah when you start getting that i mean it's fine but like <laughs> it's hard oh sorry go ahead no, you're fine. <laughs> it, it is it's, it seems where it's like it, it's manageable but it's not exactly the most pleasant thing in the world yeah exactly it's just like I gotta keep going. Yeah, I got things right, to do. Just, just a little bit more. Aaron, yeah. Aaron, what have you been up to? Uh, well, it's, it's also been an extremely long week for me. Uh, I am on call still. Uh, all the all of the crazy. Um, so that, that's been all of pretty much all of my week um, has been dealing with. 
all of that nonsense. Um, Shelby's sister uh, spent the week with us, <clears throat> and I did not know that a 12-year-old girl could eat so much snacks and watch so many horror movies um, <laughs> in, like, a three-day span. This, this like, we, we put on... So um, I did. You could have told me that. I have 12-year-old yeah. girls all day. They're, <laughs> they're nuts. We we put on um, Rob Zombie's um, House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, that movie's not for 12-year-olds. Yeah, just, no, just that's it. what I said. And he's like, no, no, this is this looks interesting. And like, I was sitting there and I was like, um, you good? And she's like, yeah, this is fine. And then once it's done, she's like, oh, I actually really like that movie. And I'm like, what? Dude, that movie is messed up. Like, yeah. So she, she, yeah, she, she did that with, um, with Shelby. Shelby was not a fan of it. Um, <laughs> and so we watched that and then they watched like not one of the poltergeist movies but something along the lines like that and then some um some, uh movie about a doll that was possessed and whatnot and annabelle so question mark no it's the other oh. one Oh, Chucky? The other, other no, one? It was oh, the, one? I'm out. That's, that's the two I know. I know. <laughs> Toy, Toy Story. That's the two I've heard of. Toy Story. Toy Story. All Toy yeah. Story. <laughs> so they, they watched that, and then they wa- we watched them. Um, excuse me, uh, Stranger Things yesterday, and then I had some crazy stuff go on. But they also, and small children can just chow down on all of the junk food, because we went and got, like, just junk food for them to kind of you know like oh yeah sure you know whatever just go and enjoy and do this like no they ate all of it like that i've never seen any small human consume that much but it was it was all of you consumed and so we um they did that um the snyder cut for the justice league films came out today oh did it so i have some yeah so it is four hours long Oh, and so I have we'll, some watching. I have to say, that. we'll be looking forward to your yeah. report next week. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, that is not a that, challenge. I'm going to get done on. <laughs> I've, I've always been extremely excited for that to come out. So that came out, um, and then I, I got home super late today. Um, it's going to be a long day tomorrow, and I'm going to Oklahoma City this weekend. Uh hang out with friends. Shelby's going to go down to Texas and do some shopping with her mother for um, it, it's her mom's birthday weekend. So they're going to go down and do that. And so I'm like, oh, it's a free weekend for once. And so I'll, I'll go down and do that. All good. Yeah, that's, that's what Aaron has been doing this entire week. It's just been one crazy thing after the other or Coming home and being like, "Oh, you're still up watching horror films." Gotcha. <laughs> I'm gonna not watch that. So don't bother. Me. I, I, don't I, mind I, me. I, I will you, not. Is it, is it, well, because like I, my horror film experience has never been that great. Granted, just I I watched um, Signs in Kansas, and so that freaked me out. So I had a different taste on how horror films are. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's too re- it's too real. Too Whenever real, you're too real. watching it in a field of corn, <laughs> so much oh, corn. No. So I had 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 the, had the film. I watched it with cousin Alex, and I was like, "Oh wow, Mel Gibson! Oh wow, so much <clears throat> corn!" And then like you come out into the parking lot, there's corn there. You're like, uh, yeah, uh-oh. I'm like, oh, um, oh no, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it's just it's just been you know. Something that's been in my mind ever since. I'm like, I don't, I don't like horror. <laughs> so yeah, um, they watched that. They did all that stuff. I mean, they they stayed up like every, because it's it's spring break for them too. And uh, I unfortunately did not get spring break, and so I was, uh, I got to to watch them have fun from a distance. Oh wow, that looks. 
<laughs> I remember it's fun. Crazy. It's <laughs> fun. Wow, I remember that. So yeah, they, they got to do that, and then yeah, they'll, uh, she'll be leaving tomorrow. Once work gets done, I'll be leaving tomorrow for Oklahoma City, and that's that's about it. That's been Aaron's week in a nutshell. Hmm. A few late nights typing here and there. All the all the documentation. If you have documentation. I'll probably done for you. Um, so yeah, that's good. That's what Aaron's been up to. Hey, I had a question about you for you on that. Um, I know that early on in the uh, pandemic, you- there was concern about. No. reporting and uh, accountability and people um, uh, re- reporting child abuse and concerns uh, and that there was fear that that would go down because schools weren't in session and there were other things. Like that. How has that panned out? Um, and what, what kind of things have you seen as far as just general trends of, of reporting? Has it, it sounds like it's increased in frequency lately. Yes and no. Usually, by so it it it, it fluctuates basically as school goes. Um, if schools are in session, it's usually busier, regardless. Okay. Um, yeah. A, a lot of people were concerned that that, and, and it still sort of is kind of how it, it pans out if you think about it. Like schools not in session, either due to like some sort of holiday. Um, you know, things go, you know, calls go down, um, school comes back into session, you know, it goes back up. Um, we're also, we're, we're seeing kind of a big trend of, you know, the quarantine, uh, quarantine went down or started uh, this time last year, aka nine months. So we're also seeing like pretty high birth rate go up. Um, that's a thing. And so we're getting a lot more like kind of younger cases um counties like so, so osage county for those of you listening if you don't know um it's the largest county in the state of oklahoma however we are the most harsh like we have the very least populated um because we're you know we're so big we're so spread out uh, places like oklahoma city um oklahoma or sorry uh yeah oklahoma city and Tulsa. They're their own counties, but they're separated DHS or you know, welfare wise into like separate districts, and they are constantly busy. Like it's not very so in in our county on an, in a normal week, your one person is probably going to see like a case a week at best. Um, Tulsa County, on the other hand, they get about like one worker can get like three cases a day. And like you have to get those cases done that day, kind of thing. And so with, with them, it is like it's a much busier, um, you know, ordeal. It's you know more constant. I mean, like on a busy week for us. I mean, there was you know we we helped with other counties. Um, I got one case a day for an entire week, and then there was one time where I got. Two cases a day. Wow. Um, but there wasn't there wasn't a really kind of a trend, if you if you will. Um, I mean, it, it was just the, the the sheer amount of stuff that we got, and just the you know of what kind of things that we saw. And I can't I can't go into details as far as like investigations go, but there there's right. a lot of things that like ranging from you know. Oh, this this shouldn't even be investigated. To yeah, I need to go out with law enforcement like now, kind of stuff. So there, there there's a there's a big it, 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 there's no way to know like what's going to come in. Um, it, it just kind of happens, and you're like, ah, well, it looks like I'm going to be you know dealing with twelve different kids today. So this will be fun. Um, I can't there. Our uh, our kind of hippie esque director did some sort of statistical thing, and I just haven't been bothered to look at it or pay attention. Um, because you know, I've been, you know, they're, they're wanting us to do this and also do all these trainings of you know, how to properly wear your mask um, when you're visiting families. 
to not seem like you're, you know, dangerous. What are you talking about? What? It just, I don't know. Just pay me for my mileage. Like, let me go do my job. I don't need your 50 degree training. Like, I don't care. Um, <laughs> so there's a lot of that. Um, but as far as like actual like statistical trends, I, I can't tell you because they usually you know fluctuate with the school year. Um, when it first started, yeah, we like there was like two weeks where I did not get a case like at all, and it was nice. I got a lot of documenting done. I did you know. You know, I got I got a lot of cases done. I was literally down to like zero percent. Um, and then like boom, the week after that, I got three cases in two days, and I was driving all over the county. And you know, I went from you know maybe like ten percent on my caseload to over one hundred and twenty percent, which just means they they base it off of how many children are in each referral. And we go from like ten percent, meaning aka like one kiddo to oh boom, here's you know, all uh, all of the children. So it um it, it it was a vastly different vibe going from oh I'm not doing anything, I don't have any cases to do, to do, do, and they're like oh kiddo, um here's all the rest. So um. Other counties could probably tell you, like, no, dude, it's, like, crazy, like, all the time. But, like, for our county, sometimes it's, like, I haven't had to talk to a single person at all, and it's been great, and I love it. Or then you're, like, I, I visited three separate families in one day. I don't know what time it is right now. I didn't eat lunch. Um, so, yeah, it just it just varies, honestly. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good to know. Uh... Because again, when when this all started happening, especially when schools started to shut down, that was a big concern. So it just sounds like there's there's always fluctuations, and you're just always kind of busy, and sometimes not. So <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. I, I I remember reading a lot about you know, people and and that concern of you know oh there's not going to be people monitoring children. There you know people no one's going to be there for the kiddo and. Like we we did see that that was that was a thing that did occur. Um, however, um, there was always a way for someone to report something sure. in concerns. So the fact the fact that, that there were people, um, you know, there or wherever they may be, you know, being supportive, being vigilant, helping kids out, um, ha- has been tremendous. Um, and so as far as like, why is it bleeding? Oh, hello. What? I have all of the blood on me. Um, on. <clears throat> Sound um, like one of my sixth graders again. They do that once while they're like, can I have a band-aid? I'm like, why? Like, I'm bleeding. Like, How? No. You're just sitting at your desk. What are you doing? I, uh, yeah, I, I was, was going to say, just, it sounds like I'm the start to a here. horror film, actually. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Aaron, check your back. Where's the knife? Is there a doll? Oh, sorry, yeah. I, was, <laughs> um, I, wa- I watched some nature documentaries. And they talked about, like, these different levels of like leeches and I'm like dude that's Ugh. crazy leeches that's weird and then like I looked out I'm like <laughs> I've been in the Amazon recently <laughs> what is the leech so yeah I I don't I don't know what's happening guys I'm sorry okay well, it's all right it's God. terrifying Aaron, Aaron is you Aaron is bleeding okay well give us a sit yeah. on that and every 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 little bit okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm very worried. Do you have band aids? Um, yes. Oh, okay. a little lighter. Here we go. Uh, okay. that's not a band aid. Light. Oh, oh, I oh, said no. the blood was getting lighter. <laughs> I was like, that's not good either. Oh, no, I have a, I have a lighter. <laughs> that's definitely worse. Like, <laughs> I have hand sanitizer and a lighter. Guys, I'll be fine. Uh, this is about to get real bad, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize I for Jason Warren. I know what I'm doing. Have you ever oh, field dear. carterized a wound? <laughs> <laughs> neither, um, have, neither have I. Get the blame. Neither have I. Oh. This is not I going to be pretty. I one time. Uh, what? I, I didn't realize how hot you needed. Yeah, so it was in Boy Scouts, and that probably doesn't help my story much. Um, no. But I watched <laughs> you know, Bear Grylls. I was like, look, guys, I got a little cut. I'm going to, you know, 
fix it myself. And I, I stuck my knife in the fire for like uh, uh, a minute uh, and like stuck it on my leg. Uh, I was like, what does it hurt more? But yeah, Because it, <laughs> it's burning. Not, not my most proudest of moments. You say, that's like a... It's like a last resort for like a massive wound. Yeah, and right? they usually use not like, like I've got a too. small thorn. Yeah, I've got a small little nick. I better burn it closed. It's not too bad. Like, like oh dear. Yeah. So oh no. I I have not done that since. So that's good. Please don't do that again. Let's not start now. Ugh. <laughs> Oh dear! All right. <laughs> oh my! As Aaron bleeds out on air. Uh... <laughs> Aaron bleeds to oh. death. Well, that's unfortunate because I had a follow-up question for Aaron about something completely different. I was going to change the subject yeah, and ask him something sorry, else. Sorry. Uh, Aaron, why I you wanted. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before you bleed out, I wanted to ask about. You texted me earlier this week, and you t- told me that you were reading the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. How's it oh, going? Yeah. Hold on. Wait. Hold that out. Hold on. Oh, man. Is, this is not a visual program. You don't need to pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. As you can uh, see, ladies and gentlemen, I am on page seven hundred out of like my two volumes. It's like thousand. There you go. Um, out of in this version, I got page six hundred and thirteen. Um, I'm say so. The events that were that are chronicalized the person wrote this stuff down like a thousand years after all this stuff happened. Yeah. Um, ch- uh, ancient Chinese, not poetry, that's not the right word. Is it? it is like it prose is- though. It's very much kind of like in the style of like the Iliad, right? Where it's yeah. just like telling you a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like any like, first of all, it's not like any like history book I've ever read. Um, I've read a lot. It's it's very like, hey, this happened. This person did this. And, oh, and by the way, this happened. And then it throws in there some sort of like random fact about some random person. Yeah. Like, and, it, uh, it, I, and also, there's like like an abnormal number of beheadings in that book. Just spoiler me knows. Like, <laughs> just like, there's like, and his head is cut off. You're like, what? What? <laughs> Yeah, so it it kind of helps. Um, There's a few. So I'm also playing um, the Three Kingdoms Total War game. There you go. um, I was was waiting for Dynasty Warriors. Eh. (laughs) Super hard. And um, and I've watched like some YouTube videos to kind of like brief me on like what I'm getting myself into. It's it's very like cool to see like oh wow this is how like. You know, like this is this is the book that you know started you know all of this and you know yeah. the Han Dynasty and blah blah. But it, it's just so like weird to read because I just got to the the part where uh, Dong Zhou was um, was tricked by, oh, right. by some governor's like daughter. Yeah, Dong Zhou. Yeah, he's and, easy now. Like, no spoilers. His, right. <laughs> His, his, yes, no spoilers for this 2,000 year old like, story. Sorry. Um, like his right hand man was like, oh, this was promised to me. And then and then he like killed him. Like, oh, well, that's kind of anticlimactic. Like, I get it. But like, but yeah, there's yeah. some more <laughs> substance behind that, really. Uh, that's true. It, for a book called The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, you're like, can I have some more detail, please? It's, like, it's not very romantic. Yeah. Well, it's just like. Cover- it covers uh, so I <laughs> I am reading up more on this book while you guys are talking. Uh, just some book stats. So this covers what a hundred. Oh yeah, it's years. a long period of time. It covers a hundred yeah. years, and and it yeah. does this w- with nearly a thousand dramatic characters over the course yes, of the book. Yes, it's it's so dense. To put this like into- the dog's row thing is like the very beginning, and then there's and, like all this. Yeah, it's crazy. And and I had, I had to look history's this up. But strongest warrior. The number, guess what the average number of words in the typical novel is? Oh, just, just a words. normal novel? Yeah, normal novel. Oh, I don't know. No, well, yeah. A couple thousand, maybe. 40,000. Guess how many 40, words 000. are in this book? Like a million. That just, book is so huge. Just about. 
it's it, exactly a, a, just a, a total of 800,000 words. <laughs> yeah. I have it in two volumes. What? It's I have volume one and two, and it's like a thousand pages it's, together. It's, <laughs> like, so, so my it's question is crazy. So, so you've, Brandon, you've read the whole thing or parts of it or. Yeah. Okay. I've read the whole thing. Okay. And Aaron, you are now reading it. But it's been a while. How do you even keep track of all nine. of those <laughs> of all he's on seven words all of those characters over the course and let it have an impact on on you the reader right like i think it'd be easy to read it like a history yeah. book and end with nothing and have no impact or no other, but it's supposed to be the romance of that so like how do you keep yeah. all that and still be impacted by the story uh my takeaway from reading the whole thing is there there are like some defined acts right like there are like a whole bunch of mini story arcs that happen okay right there's like the thing with dong Zhuo that happens and then there's like some stuff about like sun jian right in the soon kingdom and then there's kind of like a section that's about like uh liu bei and the peach garden peach garden yeah um yeah they with, him and his his quote-unquote brothers yeah like, his brothers are, yeah let me yeah, keep, keep uh, Zhang, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu, right? Uh, they so there's these kind of like yeah. mini story arcs and everything, and then there's stuff with Cao Cao, and there's like the Dian Wei, his bodyguard, and how he like sacrifices himself to save him in the castle escape thing, like all that stuff. Like, so there's it's weirdly it's weird because it's like this huge, dense, like hundred year saga, but it's broken down kind of into these like little mini arcs that occur. Okay. that are kind of interconnected to tell a full story. Sure. Right. So it's kind of like reading a series of events, like this event yeah. happened and then like this event happened and they're kind of tied together in some way, but you can kind of read parts of it and kind of stop and digest that bit and then read the next bit and kind of digest that and see how it's connected. You do sure. kind of have, you cannot read it just like, you know, like a One thriller minute. novel where you just like blast through it, you know, you're like, do, 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 read through. Let me read this little yeah. paragraph real quick to kind of like understand like the, like the terminology. It's used in this book because this is the Penguin classic. Uh, having sworn their mutual alliance, they agree that um, in, in this book, they use his name, not Liu Bei, um, but it's like Zonade Zandi. Oh, yeah. Will henceforth be considered the elder brother. Wang Yu the second and Xiang Fei the third, having vowed before heaven and earth, they cook the meat and share out the wine and invite the three hundred or so who have agreed to join them from the surrounding area to feast and drink with them in the middle of the peach orchard. Like there was yes. a lot of information just in that. <laughs> yes. So, okay. But like th this book is weird because after the chapter, like you'll read a little bit and then like he'll have like. I kind of call it like the Dragon Ball Z like epilogue thing because it's like in this one um, uh, he must die, Zhang Fei shouts. He draws his sword, rushes back to the Imperial Forces camp, intends on killing Dong Zhou. And then it says will Dong Zhou survive? This will soon be revealed. And then it's like boom, next chapter. You know? oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. Also, Zhang Fei does that a lot. He's a very angry boy. Like he's going to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've noticed, but yeah, it, it like in my in my mind, like I was gonna read it like as a history book, but it's not like that. But then it like, but it kind of is history stuff. Yeah, it's weird. But sure, it it goes from it goes from this, and then like especially when you get to the like on um, what you were talking about, like keeping all those characters like legitimately <laughs> focused. Um, like once you get to like the the eight princes period, like that oh, kind of yeah. really goes out the window because you're like I don't remember who this person is. Well, yeah, but the princes yeah. don't matter because it's the other important like leaders of the territories that are yeah. the big thing, like the warrior and, people that are involved. Yeah, that's, that's the so, focus like, in, of the story. In in this, like it it talks about like you know, there's definitely like the people that you need to focus on. Um, especially when it actually gets the three the three kingdoms of Xiao Xiao, Liu Bei, and who's the other guy? Uh, Sun Tse. 
yeah, Sunsei, like those people, like ah, yes. And then his yeah. later, his brother Sun, uh, Sun Xuan. Yeah, um, I can't, I can't keep all the emperors in check because it, it becomes a nightmare. Um, afterwards, well, yeah, but they're again, they're not important because they're like, you know, those three leaders are like using them to help get advantage on the other one to be the it's whole thing. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it it takes a little bit out. And there, there is sometimes, like, in the front of this book, um, it actually kind of gives, like, a little brief, like, like who the person is and, like, like who, like, how are they related. To oh, that's good. Her. Like, the cast list almost, kind of. This, this one also gives me, like, a, yeah, this one also gives me, um, has, like, chronology, and then it has, like, a little, it, it has some pictures in it, too. It's like, oh, that's what that person looks like. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so it's, uh, uh yeah, I it, I I dove into it, and then I'm like, I right, hold on, like I set it down. I haven't touched it in like two days, and I picked it up three like days I was on. I was like, oh crap, where am I? Who are these people? Oh no! <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, the this person's doing this. So pretty good. So I'm, I'm caught back up now. All right. Yeah. Well, that that brings me to my follow question I wanted to ask about uh. Dude not sort of like books that are outside the standard just kind of like the text structure right because you have most books kind of follow a similar text structure story arc you know you get that like western uh you know the what is it called the plot diagram that you kind of follow right um do you like i was wondering if you've ever read any other books that are like kind of outside the norm that struck you as like bizarre and were like they are often more difficult to read because they're so different like that i was wondering if you had uh, either of you had any examples from your reading your literary past uh, that sort of struck you as just kind of like outside the norm of uh that standard tech structure kind of like how this one is it's just very like very dense very like what what what's happening what's going on <laughs> Hmm. That's a great question. Um, Colin, anything you can think of off the top of your head? Um, I think I, for for me, I think the the first time I had this level that impact of this is not written the way I'm used to reading was when I read Robinson yeah. Crusoe. Um, oh, and, that's and, a good example. And I learned of the invention of the semicolon and. Because <laughs> in Robinson Crusoe, at least the version I wrote, read, you would look at the text and you'd be like, that is a full paragraph. And you dive into it. And all of a sudden you're like, this is a sentence. This is all <laughs> one sentence because it's just semicolon, 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 like two semicolons in a row or three semicolons. And, and, and coming from everything else that I had read and now how it was written the and having to for me when reading that one it was written in such a way that you had to simultaneously hold all of these same ideas up in the air so in, before you reach the period of the end of the sentence before it all made sense right like that, that yeah. style of writing of like this this thought and this concept moving in this direction but also this thing moving forward and then we're going to put them together at the very end to me it's not. I don't think it's not. It's not exactly like a true literary literary difference. I think it was more stylistic. What what they wrote or the 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 way they That's, wrote. Yeah. But but to me, when you were when you were describing this feeling of reading something that was just wholly different and and required a new way of thinking or processing what you're reading, like that that was the first time. I just have a very distinct memory of reading through that and and being forced to actually like. Okay, how, I have to process this book differently than I than I could read a, a, a Redwall or a Harry Potter or anything like that. Like it's going to take yeah. me a little bit to work through this. That's what I yeah. That's another. That's a good point. Like how they pe- how they use punctuation and grammar. Uh, I read a book. Uh, where is it on my shelf? It's called uh, Oh by Gaslight uh, by Stephen Price, and it's a book about like Victorian 
London. Like it's all, you know, it's right up my alley. It's like Victorian London. <laughs> and there's like a, yeah. one of the Pinkertons is there and he's chasing down this like mysterious thing. And they're trying to solve this mystery from the past. <clears throat> but the guy that wrote it, it's his first novel ever. And it's, he's a poet <clears throat> and you can tell yeah. because like, there's no quotation. There's no like standard punctuation. So like when people are talking, you have to really be like, who said that? Yeah. What's happening? Like it's right. not structured in that, that dialogue structure, that standard dialogue structure that you're used to seeing is not there. Yeah. It's non-existent. And so it's really kind of, <laughs> it takes a lot a while to be like, what, what, who said that? What's going on? What happened? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> to kind of follow it. And it, it's really good once you get into it and the story's good and it's fine. Um, <clears throat> You can also tell he's a poet because like every once in a while he like throws in like by gaslight in like a random sentence. You're like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's a title. I get it. Oh, oh yeah. wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like <laughs> Well, and I think I think for me too, like I'm trying to think of other other times where it's just been made readily apparent to me. And I think there are um for me, um reading through passages of the Bible, at least of going, okay, how did, how would a oh, yeah, Hebrew a- <laughs> writer structure this thought? Right. Like how would, how was the, how would this, this, but you know, that's a little bit more like, again, this translation from a foreign language of like, okay, we're going to put these kind of thoughts are always at the beginning of the sentence. And then we're going to structure it around that and bring it, you know? So I think there's, for me, it's always trying to remember like, okay, culturally, um, historically, how was this would have this would this have been written to piece these thoughts together because a lot of times it's the first sentence is the the take home statement and then there's you know the allegory or there's something in the middle that if you just blust through it brush through it you're not going to see how it's all interrelated right and then you get to the last one and it's like thus and you're like what that i we weren't even talking about anything what do you mean thus and so you've got to go back through and parse back through this and go oh okay no this is all actually together it's just it seems weird because of how they wrote and how they put together thoughts. Yeah, that's a good point too. Cause yeah, sometimes it's really hard to be like that like decoding what's happening. Uh, any religious text really right. Right. who are they like talking? Because they're so old. <laughs> yeah. They're so old. They're written in a time in a language in a structure that's not familiar. And so right. you're kind of just like Mm, right what? having to sit down going like say, <laughs> for, for me a lot of times it's sort of like when it says you going okay who who's the you that that this is yeah. being spoken is to it is, me is it me is, is it, it is it the crowd which crowd to whom in the crowd are the is this being directed yeah. to? right like th- there's a lot of that's that true. especially like paul's letters right they're very that's a very specific you <laughs> yeah, right it is he's it talking is. to like a group of people <laughs> yeah and and having to, to you need the context of like who those people are yeah yeah and and so i think and that that may be a slight <clears throat> tangent to what you're getting at here because that's like okay i I'm studying this or I'm looking oh, for this. For no, it's still, right? it still counts. I think it still fits in just as like a non-standard is just kind of what I was going at in any okay. way. Sure. That, mm-hmm. That's kind of my, my question here. Cause that's another, I guess. And another one is like any, anything that's like super old. Yeah. Right. When you read like mm-hmm. Canterbury tales, right. Sometimes it's just like, Mm, what <laughs> or like Beowulf you know when you had to read Beowulf in high school and you're like I was, what? I was, I was actually just about to re- bring up Beowulf I know that that popped up a few shows ago but but yeah Beowulf is a great example of that of going I have actually no context or foundation to, <laughs> to, to even know how to approach yeah, this anything is what? happening what <laughs> So, yeah, I know, Aaron, do you have any anything? I, I was going to say the first time I ever tried to read, like, the Iliad and the Odyssey. To um, see the, okay. Oh, that's a, yeah. Because, I, again, like, I was thinking, like, oh, this is a, you know, it's a history book. It's going to sound like this. Yeah. And It's like, a poem. I didn't, <laughs> like, I, did, I didn't know, like, I didn't understand, like, how it was, like, broken down to, like, um, the different sagas that are in it and like i was like uh what does that mean what 
So like that, that was the first like I never finished it, and then because I was like I don't I don't know what this means I don't know, and then like I remember I tried to read. Um, well, I remember Colin tried to read uh, Moby Dick to me, and that just went like way over my head, my head. And then I tried to read it's like the original version of Count of Monte Cristo. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that one. It's a good one. And like, like now my brain is like, oh, I can do this. But like, I couldn't understand like the French way of like. That's true. Uh, the thing threw me off and like all of that stuff. I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. My brain can't compute what's happening right now. Um, but, but those were definitely like the first books that my, my wee little brain like tried to do. But I was like, I, I don't. I don't know what that means. I don't know what's happening. Uh, that's a good point. Like uh, foreign novels that have been translated. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they, especially old foreign, like, you know, like Dumas. And then uh, that made me think of like Jules Verne. Like some of the stuff mm-hmm. that he, he writes is like, like it's not this exactly the same. It's just like really dry in that 1800s type of way of writing. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> Uh, like it's good eventually, but you're like, blah. Well, yeah. come on, get to the point. Uh, the one that I the uh, the reason I brought this up was sure. I am currently reading a book called I the Supreme, hmm. and it is by. Hold on, I had to pull this up because I don't. I, the book is at school. I left it on my desk today on accident. Um, it's by Augusto Roa Bastos. Apologies if I mispronounce your name, sir. Uh, it is a book that is. It's a like a fictionalized account of the first dictator of Paraguay, uh, Jose Gaspar Rodriguez de Francia. Uh, but he refers to himself only as El Supremo or I in the book. Ah, and the whole book is like it. It's like it is presented to you as a compilation of dictated notes and things from El Supremo. Right. So yeah. it appears what's happened is the the only actual characters in the book are the dictator and his secretary, okay. Patino. And he's dictating all this stuff to him. And so like there's conversations between them kind of a little bit, but it, the secretary is just writing everything down. Yeah. And then the compiler, this mysterious compiler, has found all these papers and put them together in a, in a, like to tell this story. Right. Yeah. Um, but then there's also like the compiler and then there's the author, the Bostos are not the same person, right? It's kind of presented to you in that way. (laughs) And it's really bizarre because it's kind of like a weird examination of like, language and because like the dictator has risen to power through his manipulation of language and the power it holds over people but he's dictating everything to his secretary so his secretary is actually holding a lot of the power because he's writing this down and he's changing things and it's implied that a lot of the stuff that there's like these little compilers notes that are sprinkled throughout there and it's sort of implying that, like, what the El Supremo is saying uh, in certain cases is not factual. Uh, sure. And it's, it's wrong, right? <laughs> it's his version of events. Yeah. And the compiler is being like, um, act- actually, this is what's happening in these little marginal note things oh. that are on the side. And some oh, of them wow. are like super long. And it's like, <laughs> it's re- there's no chapters. It just sort of goes. Hmm. <clears throat> and it, it appears that it's a compilation from like several different documents sure yeah yeah that are like placed in order and they're like chronologically they don't necessarily follow an order they're like yeah pages from like one journal are interspersed throughout the book and they're not like sequentially located together it is so hard to read <laughs> that's ins- wow it's crazy huh. like you're trying to follow this like weird linear story that like jumps around and there's like four different stories happening about all these different times. Like one thing is about like the beginnings of Paraguay and like when (laughs) he came to power and when he like broke away from the junta and like did all the stuff. And like, 
the, <laughs> there's another part about like just a story about like him when he's younger and like there's that like stuff that's supposedly going on like quote unquote now like uh you know where he's dictating like current events to his secretary and he's like what yeah. what <laughs> huh yeah that sounds like one of those but uh the, but i guess so go ahead. yeah go ahead sorry no no you're fine you keep <laughs> no i was just saying it's supposed to be like some kind of examination between like language and power and all this stuff and like allegedly uh i read the other day that it's also sort of a thinly veiled dig at one of the the guy whoever was dictator of paraguay when this book was published in the 80s and the author is actually like he's actually like exiled from paraguay because of the novel oh my gosh so yeah apparently paraguay had dictators for like literally ever i learned that uh (laughs) so it's this just really it's really confusing and it's hard to follow (laughs) but it's like also interesting and i'm sure i'm like missing tons of stuff too because it's like all this stuff about paraguayan history which i know absolutely nothing should be real <laughs> so like <laughs> so brandon brand brought re-jogged my memory of another book that i had like a super hard time reading and i didn't quote unquote actually like read it read it into like until i was like out of college but it was it's a uh, master and margarita Did you read that book I've heard, it's, heard that what? name. Master, yeah. Master the Margarita? It's, it's Master and Margarita. Okay. Margarita. Um, it's a Russian, it's a, it's a country of origin is the Soviet Union, and it was written during the period of, like, the Stalinistic era, but it wasn't oh, published. Oh, <laughs> I bet it's um, fun. The, oh, I bet there's no gulags like, in it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, <laughs> no. no, 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 no. Yeah, Kat Stalin, huh. get, get find out like what what i'm doing um it, it, it it's, it's 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 really weird there's like a cat that's in it but he's also like then like satan makes an appearance and like such sort of other stuff and there's like what and so it there, there's a lot of like i can't even like i had to pull it up on wikipedia because i was like i remember this book um novel has two settings the first is moscow during the 1930s where satan appears to a patriarch pawns as professor uh, he's a copy uh, accompanied accompanied this by the people um, the target is the el- literary elite uh and their trade unions whose headquarters uh consists of corrupt social climbers and their Bureaucrats, blah blah blah. The second setting is in Jerusalem with Pontius Pilate. Um, Pilate's trial of Isha, Austria, Jesus of Nazarene, uh, his recognition of uh, blah, blah blah and spiritual need for Jesus, uh, his reluctance. But this, I, I, if this is the book I'm thinking of, because um, I had to read a lot of that kind of Arab book yeah. in my in, uh, yeah. history and culture class. And like, if this is the book I'm thinking of, because I kind of again blacked out um, during that whole time period, um, the the guy was like, he was like arrested or something, um, and like, his wife actually like hid the book uh, so it wouldn't be found. Oh, and it was wow. actually published like years later. It's like he he wrote it and then he um, like destroyed the copies that he had he's like yeah if i get found it's definitely not not good um and so yeah he he uh like got rid of it and then like his wife published it like years later um and so i i have a copy of it i opened up the first chapter to, to read for my class i was like nope i'm just going to google this because i there's no way i can comprehend you know 600 some odd pages of this like it's not gonna happen <laughs> it, that's true it, russian literature is kind of its own special category yeah. of like <laughs> what? well especially <laughs> russian literature that's yeah. distributed through samas dot uh, you know, uh yeah be good <laughs> and it's like yeah and it's yeah all i'm um, not all uh, 
obviously, but like a lot of rush. Wait a minute, this is not actually about what it says. It's about, about it's about right. something else. <laughs> like, and you yeah. have to like, it's yes. like an exercise in like figuring out like, oh, they're oh, actually talking I, about this, this, and that's why they don't want <laughs> you to publish it. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's true. There's, there's a lot of that, but I, I remember that book just being like apocalyptically atrocious. Yeah. I was like I don't understand that. Just, That's uh, true. Because some of these things say they're using these techniques and like just or like inventing their own techniques at some point. They're just like really hard to follow. And if you're not like ready for it, uh, it's really difficult to access what they're trying to tell you. You know what I mean? Like it can be a struggle. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. even even like I'm just looking at my bookshelf here and I'm just thinking like even the first time I encountered non sequential storytelling <laughs> when I read Catch Twenty Two, right? That book is all <laughs> out of whack. It jumps around all over the place. Yeah. And it goes you had to remember all this stuff and it's like it's doing it on purpose because it's a book about in the insanity of the military. Uh but like it, at first you're like, wait, it, wait, what I, I don't understand. Like what I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, th- yeah. The nonlinear storytelling is a is a is a feature of books that allows a really neat stories to be told, but when done poorly, it's just as bad as trying to watch a nonlinear movie, right? When you're like, oh when it's, yeah, right. Like it can be go bad really, really quickly. That, um, that's true. <laughs> I, you know, that's simplistic, very true. Simplistically, honestly, some of the first nonlinear stuff that I was ever exposed to when I was reading stuff are all the Redwall books because there's always the, the tro- right the trope in that is there's always true. two stories happening simultaneously, always yeah maybe, maybe three and it kind of alternates between chapters of like what story you're going to t- go back to yeah but, but even even that like, like the thing at the abbey and then like whoever's out on the adventure, the adventure right, right, yeah. right right like yeah. but, but even yeah. even just having exposure to those simplistic non-linear stories and keeping things and keeping track of where people last were and and what the significance of this move is and some of that gets hard when you're reading uh, pieces that were written not just during a certain time but also for a certain time that's whenever a lot of this yeah. gets really yeah. hard like 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 this the book that you're talking about there and of of the master and margarita of of where that was written to people who were currently going through those atrocities and was trying to send a message and communicate to them for a very specific reason and then to to out of context come back and try and read that story with all our with our modern eyes and not having the background and the experiences that those readers would have been bringing to the table, it gets really hard. like you know you said yeah. earlier, Brian, like <laughs> you feel like you're missing all of this context, you're missing all this stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. Like that's <laughs> we all we I are. don't know anything about Paraguay, so right. yeah. like I'm like. <laughs> Uh, what yeah <laughs> yeah so trying to approach these is like okay what was the context and again going to whom is this being written what would that person have known and yeah because and, and think- every once in a while they mention a name like of somebody and i'm like i bet that person's important uh, <laughs> i don't yeah. know who that is but, yeah. <laughs> but the way yeah it's just kind of thrown out there like i should know this person so yeah it turns out it's like some like super famous paraguayan like military general and you're like yeah oh, oh okay. gotcha 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 yeah okay i got it <laughs> but i think that level of re- i don't know i i, I think that that at that level of like that is a pretty advanced level of reading not just not super just, oh right? man right and it's because it's not just do you understand this but but do you understand that you're that you don't understand it right does that make sense like like do you- yeah, yeah yeah like <laughs> yeah there's there's a, a deeper meaning other than the story and it's like very obtuse and sometimes it's like hidden you know and it, you have to like uncover what's really happening and it's not clear and that you, you always feel like you're missing out on something kind of, yeah. uh, cause you're like, I don't, I don't understand what I'm, you know? And when you, you know, when you try to read these things by yourself, uh, it can be real hard, especially if you're reading a, a 
a South American novel that was published in the eighties. Not lots of online resources uh, to help you like <laughs> yeah. what's happening. So you're like, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's hard, and it but it's really like it's it's also like weirdly. I find it intriguing and like fun too at the same time. You know, it's not like overly frustrating for me sometimes. I mean, sometimes it is, obviously, because you read some stuff and you're like, what the heck was what that? Is this? But like, yeah. <laughs> it is sort of an interesting kind of challenge, like a, it's a mental gymnastics to try to make your own meaning out of what's happening, plus try to figure out what the author's telling you. Like, the message they're trying to send you and like, you're still trying to apply things to others. It's really just, it's that high. It's like, oh, just a, like you said, it's a really, it's a much higher level of reading that is like, it's re- rewarding, but also like really frustrating at the same time. So like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Cause yeah. When you sit down you're like, great, I'm going to read this ostensibly fiction literature and it's going to require a lot of research or even, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like like i'm gonna do a lot of googling and note taking for this but it is it is really yeah because i don't understand what's happening <laughs> <laughs> but you're right like i feel like parsing through that and because you, you do get different levels of enjoyment out of it as you do that like doing a cursory read through and and appreciating for it okay that was a good story and then go okay doing a deeper dive and going, okay, but like, and then enjoying it for the meaning that it brings. Yeah. Um, right. Like yeah. I think that you can, and you can always, I think you can always read. I don't know. Always. Okay. I think there's a lot of instances where you can read a, many things um, at several different levels. And, and, Oh the, yeah. And, and the joy of that, right. The joy of that is, and to movies and TV to, to a lesser extent, because I feel like that there is a lot of, heavy handed interpretation and hand holding that they have to do for, for people to, to get a point across. But like for literature there, yeah, there's a lot of hand holding. Sometimes you're like, guys, <laughs> yeah, you don't need to, you know, it's like, like, you know, as you know, Bob, this, I feel insulted right. that you think I couldn't figure that out. Like, come yeah. on now. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but you, you don't, in a lot of instances as well, like in books, like you lack that. So you have to bring that, you have to bring that and, yeah. and a good author knows that and a good author knows okay like this is gonna spiral this way or like this could be taken a couple different ways and they can write to that um which i think is always enjoyable because then you get to be you become part of the story at that point like you genuinely you literally become part of it because you're you are reading into it like sometimes that can get dangerous when you read into things your background when you're not you know you oh, should, yeah. right like <laughs> yeah yes I yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but pulling meaning out of the book and or pulling emphasis and uh and takeaways out of the book and, and applying them to your life that's a whole nother level where you're like oh my gosh like okay yeah i totally i totally see that um and, and can see how i can relate to it on that for that instance that's true uh that explanation brings me to quite possibly the most bizarre book I've ever read. Uh, when you mentioned you become a part of the story. Okay. Right. Your oh. interpretation becomes important. <clears throat> uh, have you ever heard of a book called S? No. Uh, it's written by a guy called Doug Dorst and co-authored by a guy you might have heard of named J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <clears throat> So this book, this book is wild. All right. It's actually two things at once. The book is packaged as a book called The Ship of Theseus by fictional author V.M. Straka. Okay. Okay. When you open the book, it is full of, it, it is the novel The Ship of Theseus by V.M. Straka. It's very crazy, like surrealist novel. Right, it's very strange, from like the 30s or something. In the margin of this book are scribbled little handwritten notes, and it is a conversation between two individuals who are passing the book back and forth, 
reading it and trying to understand the meaning. They're trying to like find the identity of this fictional VM Straka, right? They're trying to figure out who, cause this is, this is in, in universe. This is the only book he ever wrote. He's this like really niche, mysterious author. No one knows about him. And these two people are like trying to uncover who he is. And in the margin is handwritten notes and they're different handwritings. So oh you can gosh. tell who's writing what. And they've been written at different times because they're in different colors. Uh, <laughs> and it's oh, a conversation insane. between it's like an it's like analog text messages, basically, yeah. between these two people, conversations between these two people oh, that have been cool. Oh, my gosh. It's so crazy. And in the book, in certain pages, it comes in like this big package thing <clears throat> on certain pages. There's just like stuff inserted in there like evidence they found like a postcard and like <laughs> a coffee receipt that they wrote a bit a longer note to each other on and like wow a picture with you know stuff on it and like newspaper clippings and all it's nuts that's it insane is nuts right wow. like there's huh. like this fictional like society that's like involved in all this stuff and like every once in a while in the book there's like a third handwriting and you're like, well, uh, uh, what, uh, what the heck is that? Who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. That's not what the heck's going on here. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> hmm. It's, it's the wildest thing. Well, that's a really, I've ever read really cool take on what it means to be even not just a novel, not, but like what it actually means to be, a book, right? Like you, because you, yeah. as you said, like it's this mystery in a book thing, like that you're actively involved in as well. So, huh? huh. Yeah, I like it, it. Yeah, it's like yeah, you're like you have picked up this book that these people have been like checking out from a library and like passing back and forth, and they're like, I think it it, it did. There is on the outside cover uh, a fake library code, <laughs> so it's implied that it was stolen from a library, awesome. right? Like. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's so wild. Like they took it from a library and there's like, it's just printed up. Like it would be an old library book in a university. Right. Yeah. Which I think is where these, both these people are like, we're English majors at a university. And then there's this backstory of like when the guy got like kicked out. Right. And he's like continuing this quest to do this. And his younger girl is there and like, and to do all this stuff. Like so bizarre. <laughs> And they're like trying to figure out who this guy is and about his life and piece together all this weird stuff with like, there's like crazy stuff about like communist, like revolutionaries and like anarchists and like, you know, like it's, a biz it's so bizarre, but it is so interesting. And it's, it is a hard one to read because you, you have to keep like 17 things straight. Cause not only you're reading their things and they're like, you read the novel part and then you're like, trying to figure out what the heck is talking about. And then you have all these notes in the margins about what mm -hmm. these other two characters, quote unquote, think it's going on and like how they're using that novel to decode these things. You're like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <I'm> like, <laughs> it's, it's wild, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's super interesting, but it, it, that's another hard one to read. Cause it, there's a lot of keeping up of like, yeah. uh, <laughs> Whoa, is, what? <laughs> well, even then, of like, like as you're reading it, going, okay, like, I at least in my brain, I'd be going, okay, well, like, what? How much of this is the story? How much am I actively trying? Do do I believe everything that's written here? Uh, you know, how much? Yeah, that's the other thing. To put on top of this, like, do I just take it? Because let's just be real. Knowing J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Mm. Yes. There's, yeah. There's a couple of times where you're like, wait, is that, that can't be right. That can't, is that true? Can't yeah. Be, yeah. You have to kind of decide how much of their information you're going to take at face value. Mm -hmm. Like, do you believe them? Are they trustworthy characters? Like what's yeah. going on? Like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It's, I like it. It's pretty nuts. It's been a while since I read that one too, but it, I, it's man. It's a, <laughs> cool i love that yeah it's it's crazy oh yeah every time we turn a page like a coast fallout with like 
some <laughs> scribbled on it and you're like and like a phone oh. number and like stuff and you're like whoa what is this like i don't understand <laughs> and it's like from a certain restaurant where they like went to like do the thing and like sure and rally gets mystery it's like whoa what's happening <laughs> <laughs> well that uh i have to add that to my list okay i have a long list oh so many so many lists. Uh, <laughs> okay <laughs> cool Oh man. <laughs> well, uh I have a lot of reading to do now. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh mm-hmm. Yeah, welcome. Okay. And uh we need to we need a we need to finalize uh, off off air. We'll uh, finalize a challenge uh for maybe not maybe not next week but the week after that so we can could do another oh. challenge because I'm getting the itch. I'm okay. Itch challenge. All right. I like yeah. it. So, okay. We'll get something to listeners. You have been teased and warned or that's or, true. Or, or both. Uh, both. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> you'll find out when we do. So now they have a, that. Now they have both a sense of anticipation and foreboding. And or, like, oh no, <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, my job here is done. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> well, you guys have a good rest of your night and uh, we'll talk soon. <laughs> All right, you do. Love you. Love you. Love you too.